Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 10 vs 10 on Ostrovno and I'm going to be using the 78th Sturm Division. Now this division is actually really really fun to play and I don't think I've shown it on the channel for a little while. It has a lot of the Stugs, the Stug 3s and it also makes use of the Nashorns. I believe it was the first division that had access to them. So we're going to be seeing those of course but we also have some other troops coming down here. So Beverongs, I've got four of those. These are 15 man squads that use Russian weapons. They have the PBSH and they've got the Mozins. They have like 13 Mozins, I think, and a submachine gun. Then we have the Schutzen, which are some of the strongest long range infantry because they use double MG42s, very similar to Panzergrens in that respect. Then we have the Begleit Pioneers, which are great medium range infantry. Can do well at range as well but ultimately are fantastic because they have a HE bundle grenade with the two-star veterancy, which makes them resilient to enemy close-range infantry, and therefore they can trade very well. So that's my infantry. Then I'm going to have two Flak 43s following us up, these 37mm AA pieces, and then two 81mm mortars, and I've got two Stug 3s at the back here at the start. So off we go. The Avkala leading the way, and Lycus going to be bringing in these Geo 145s. These things are great. They have two napalm bombs. They're not terribly effective at taking out infantry. Not all in one go, but they will probably pin down a squad if they hit them directly. But getting up onto this hill is super important, and that's going to be my job today. We're going to be taking this hill, trying to hold it, because this hill can provide a lot of pressure over this flag and this flag as well as the town in general so if we can hold this position and exert our range engagement against the enemy that's going to work out really well for us since we do have the Nars horns we do also have the pack 43 so anything that comes in at range is going to have a hard time including IS2 1944s which would be the hardest thing that I could come up against so we're already under fire my MG42 we're going to be able to spray down some of these units on the left. Inky here with the Flampanzas going into the town there was very cool, but check out the Jack 9 that's going to come in and gets hit by so much AA. Lycus has three Flak 36s and J-Dog has a 20 mil over here. I've got two 37 mil Flak 43s. So, <laughs> yeah, Yak didn't stand a chance. Anyway, Verdong's going to get chipped a little here. I've got the Schutzen and plus these Beverongs here though, so that is a solid 58 men ready to take on these Maro squads. We're going to be up against Lily here with the Corpo Italiano de Liberazione. So I'm going to be trying to just outnumber these squads. 1v1, the Maro will destroy Beverongs, but if I can get all three of these Beverongs to engage one squad at the same time, then that's going to be really good for me. So you can see I'm right clicking on that Maro specifically. And then I'm also going to be bringing in some mortar fire to help me out. On this left hand side, Stug's going to be trying to engage the SU-85. Not doing too great, does get armor cracked there. And now we're going to have an engagement against the Sherman 3. We're going to hit the first shot and that's going to penetrate. We finish off the Esploratori. One of the Maro did get surrendered because of the mortar fire, so that was good. And the Stug 3 is going to finish off the Sherman 3. So we're actually in a pretty good position. We managed to push Lily off the hill here initially and now we've got to deal with these Fusilieri uh, Bren which are going to be mortared since they're all clumped up and if I can pin those down that would be great for the engagement with the Beverongs but I'm trying to get the Schutzen across here to the left hand side so we can get some MGs on target. Meanwhile Lycus pitching up on this hill with his Panzergrens going to be dealing with that sniper on the right hand side. Lily bringing up a couple of these these are great for dealing with like light armor, but they actually can't use their 20 mil on infantry. So I don't actually have to be worried about them with my infantry here. The mortifier is coming in. It is going to pin down Lily's forces. I'm going to have to push back with those forces. And again, we're securing the hill for the time being, which is fantastic. Maro are going to be trying to come in. They are getting closer. It's a little bit worried that it was going to pick off like my Schutzen and my Beverong. So the nice thing about the Mado is they do have the 150 meter range Beretta, which is really, really good. 
uh, since it does what well, has extra accuracy anyway, and then it gets more accuracy at close range because it has 150 meter range, so they can be really, really strong. Everyone in the Fusiliari, Bren, goes down. And now we're trying to deal with this extra infantry. Now this is where things can get a bit sticky for my opponent. Because since they've lost the town and I have some really strong long range infantry in the form of the Schutzen here, I'm able to really do a lot of damage to this close range infantry that was trying to reinforce up this road. Also my Stug 3 is in a really good position in this light cover to only peek one of the Sherman 3s at a time, which is going to allow me to pretty much guarantee a win on those engagements. And now I'm looking to engage the second Sherman 3, but this bread is kind of distracting my Stug. I'm also getting distracted by the Avto here with the, with the Stug. I do have the Panzer Vernichtungs on the way, thus to deal with the L35s. In the meantime, just chilling up on this hill. And I'm going to be bringing up a couple more Stugs to accompany the first Stug that I have here. MD42 still covering the town. So now I'm going to peek the second Stug, or sorry, Sherman 3. And at this range, we have a very good amount of penetration with 135 millimeters of penetration. The Sherman 3 is going to struggle to penetrate the Stug 3. And so I'm going to get that clean kill there. And that's two Shermans down already for the Stug 3. So the Maro going to be wanting to clear them out. So I just basically bring up all of the squads at the same time to engage the Maro. We're going to be taking them out easy peasy. And then I'm just going to be adjusting my infantry. You'll see that I'll bring some back from the edge here. Because you don't really want all of your infantry in the same tree line like this. This is a huge off-map target. Now against the Italians, I don't have to worry about off-map that much. But against somebody else who might want to come and help, off-map would be a great choice. Because it's easy, you don't have to pay too much attention to it. So bringing an off-map through this light cover, getting it close to the hill, dropping it on here, would be an easy way to kind of dislodge my forces. Uh, so yeah, ideally I don't want to have them clumped up like this, but I'm going to take the opportunity to use the Panzer Benichtungs on the L35 or the L335. Looking for the second shot there, but Lily going to be reacting to that. So Stug 3s now arriving to accompany the other Stug 3 on the hill. And I did bring up a couple of extra mortars here to join my other two mortars for future mortar strikes onto the enemy. So now we have this hill, the main thing I need to do is put pressure over the town on the left hand side and ca help capture these flags. That's one thing, which is, my MG42 is doing pretty well right now. It's stopping a lot of this infantry from getting in here. And also, you know, help capture this, although like has already did a good job of getting his panzer guns up there and securing that. So we're sitting in a very good position right now with the 18 to 14 in flags. My Stug 3 is also going to be engaging to the left hand side. And one thing I do notice is there's a lot of Shermans on the way. So we have a Sherman 3 command, a bunch of three star Shermans with that because of the command being given. Um, but what do I have? I've got three Stugs sitting in light cover at the pretty much perfect range for high penetration onto these Shermans. So we're going to shift them all forwards and you'll see that they're currently on attack move orders and they're going to start firing at all sorts of different targets. Currently two of them are firing at this one. But I'm going to want to take out the Sherman 3 leader. So I'm going to be focusing that down next after that one gets killed and you can see I queue a bunch of orders so that these just delete Shermans one by one <laughs> and that's exactly what's gonna happen the Stooks just sitting up here firing away another Sherman down and again let's go bang another Sherman down and just the triple Stook just annihilating these Shermans in the open and they're not far enough forwards that the Firefly can actually fire at us so that's worked out really well the smoke didn't come down fast enough and we just managed to clean up all of that medium armor out in the open. It was an absolute massacre. It was the perfect Stug tactics there uh, to get plenty of kills. So it was really, really nice. The IG-33 is on its way. We have that coming in in a multi-ammunition truck. 
The multi munition truck is useful for like repairing the Stug 3, for example. So I'm going to be able to use it for doing that. I can also maybe give some more MG ammo to my Schutzen, for example, if they need it. Uh, but the main reason I'm bringing this in is for the IG 33, so that I can engage things like these AT guns from range. So the 57 here and the Bofors and 17 pounder. Like all of those have got to go. So Stug trying to kind of peek forwards right now. And, well, with the Firefly shooting me from the left, got to get back into cover. We did take one penetration, but at least my MG managed to kill the AT gun, so I'm not too displeased right now. And we are sitting in a very good position on this hill, really making it into a fortress right now. It's going to be hard for them to get back into. But look at this. Here we go. It's Nasor Nagel, the ace of the 78th Sturm Division. I believe he comes with the deluxe edition of Steel Division 2. I don't quote me on that, I'm not entirely sure. But either way, Nigel is on the way and he's going to be the first Nashorn that we're going to get today. MD42, three star veterancy, going to be doing a ton of damage to these infantry out in the open thanks to Lycus bringing up the Pioneer Fjordo here. Very helpful indeed. I believe I mentioned that I didn't have any command available in phase A, so Lycus supplemented me with that. Uh, very kind of him, <laughs> since this was a game that was played on stream. Uh, MG42, oh, just look how quickly it just mows down these units, and this is the beauty of these MG42s, they have such good range from a hill like this. Right, here come the Arados from Lycus, he's playing with the 11th SS. So. They're going to be dropping their vacuum bombs onto the Sherman 3s. 1,000 kilogram bombs there. Going to be hitting both of the Shermans. And I believe he killed both. One of them was most definitely damaged. I think the other one who was just lucky to get that kill. So that was really good. Both of the Shermans are going down. Again, just solidifying our position on the hill. I've still got these two Stug 3s that are ready to engage stuff in the open if I want to and Sherman 3 or sorry the multi munition truck has fixed up the Stug 3 and is also resupplying the MG here which used up a lot of ammo already so I'm bringing down the mortar rounds see I've moved forwards my 81 mil mortars a little bit going to be bringing in some supply for those so that I can start focusing down all of this all of these support weapons that are accompanying the tanks now the OB is here are really quite hard for me to deal with at range. Like, they can outrange the MG42s, for example. Uh, the 17 pounder is obviously going to chew up my Stugs if I'm not too careful. The great thing about my position on this hill, though, is I do have light cover. So you can see that I can engage the Firefly without actually revealing myself to the 17 pounder. The T34 is going to get the better of the Firefly before I do. I'm going to be able to go for the Wolverine afterward, though. And we're going to be able to take that out. Now we're going to be taking out this L335. And I'm also taking out the Bersaglieri on that right hand side. But the reason I'm not really pushing forwards, we do have the 65mm infantry gun out in the open here. That is going to chip my infantry on the edge, if I'm not too careful. Uh, the Stug 3, looking for more targets though. It's going to find the Lloyd carrier. Take that out, that's going to be a nice quick kill. And now my Stug can actually directly engage the 17 pounder since it's pinned down and the Jagdpanzer SU-76 is also engaging that so it goes down very quickly. Now the Stug's engaging the Fusilieri and we have a really really again strong foothold on this hill bringing up some Stug 3 leaders just to accompany my forces if I need to move forwards and Nagel is getting into position. Mielfogwerfers firing away. We'll eventually pin most of the stuff in their range. That P-47. Again, we have so much AA here, so... <laughs> that went down very, very fast indeed. So my IG is now going to work, my IG-33. Let me be taking out the first of those infantry guns. 
Now looking for the next one. Did take a hit from the first, so down to five health. But with the two vet, it does take a, a while to pin them. The nice thing about the IG, of course, is it can one-shot most of these things. Unless it's unlucky and misses. Well, I say unlucky. Generally, it does miss. But since both of those infantry guns are dead, it's going to be able to free kill the AT gun. And it's pretty much the perfect unit to have up here right now. So, Nagel going to be moving forwards, looking for the engagement with the Shermans. I do turn off the HE on the Nassau Nagel so that he engages the Sherman 3s without also aiming at the Fusilieri. Of course, I could right click the Shermans, but then it makes it harder to micro in the light cover because what I want to do here is kind of like peek in the light cover rather than, you know, completely show myself. And that's going to allow me to get those cheeky shots off like that. So I did manage to get the Nagel shot in on the second one. We did take a penetration, but that's okay. And now I'm going to be looking to engage the next one. And whilst the Stug 3 continues the engagement, I'm quite happy for the Stug to kind of tank the shots from the Sherman 3. So that's what I'm doing there. And the last one, well, that can now move forwards and engage both of these Sherman 3s. Also, my Stug 3 managed to take out the SU-85 in the meantime, so that was really good. But now the Shermans have actually moved out of range. I think the best thing for Lily to do here is actually, since they were stuck out in the open, actually charge rather than fall back. Because by falling back, it just allows Nagel to engage freely at range with the two-star veterancy there. Big rocket strike. Thankfully, I moved some of my units back. You see the Beverdongs back, the Schutzen back here. I mean, I had the Alcala back here on the left rather than having it all at the front so that that wasn't as effective. It still, I think, killed one of my squads and did a lot of damage to my other squads, so... Yeah, it wasn't ideal. But yeah, all of those Shermans now dead. Has put me in a really good position once again. An absolute turkey shoot from the hill for my tanks. Another IG on the way. Mortars still doing their work. Going to be mortaring these tanks that we're putting pressure on to this flag. Oh, look at this, though. It's the Alcyons. The big Italian bombers are going to come in and bomb my poor Stug 3s. And, well, both of them are going to go down. Nice bombing strike there from Lily. It's going to cost them one of those bombers. Is the second going to go down? No, it is not. Schutzen are getting killed off by the Fusilieri after that big rocket strike that came in. They do still have a decent present presence on this hill and I'm now bringing up Beglites as well to back this up with a couple of Panzer Vernichtungs and a couple of MG42s that can continue to put the engagement in at range that Marlow squad getting absolutely deleted and yeah still sitting pretty here for the time being Grim Guy with his xylophone at the back there is what hit us on this hill you can actually see that I'm going to be pinging it just in case anyone has artillery to fire at it because that's a pretty easy kill to get if like a HE round lands next to it. Speaking of counter battery though, my 81 mils do start to get focused after using them for the offensive mortar strikes for a little while. And well, the Xenophone's going to take out my poor MG there on the hill. But we do have another one on the way already. It's just arriving and the Beglites are now in position as well. The Verdongs are going to get killed off by the Mosquito. Uh, there are plenty more Mosquitoes here. Looking to shoot those down. That one having no chance in getting away. Uh, IG exploding that kangaroo. <laughs> Very nice. And finally the IG goes down. Just in time for me to replace it with another one. Shook 3 now engaging the M10. Does get a sweet penetration there. That was really good. And does get hit after that by an APCR shell. It doesn't actually die, which was pretty lucky. Now going to be coming around the corner again. And the shot from the pack 4. Is he going to be killing the M10? The... M10 probably would have killed Mushtug if that hadn't got the kill, so that was really good from Inky there, bringing up the pack 40 onto the bridge. Definitely saved my bacon. 
Now I've got the Panzer Vernichtungs that are going to be moving forwards onto the L335. Got to be careful with this. You know, this can actually kill Nigel at close range, so <laughs> I can't really peek that. <laughs> I have to use the Panzer Vernichtungs. And my big lights don't have any AT, so <laughs> yeah, it's quite reliant on the Panzer Vernichtungs here. But another Shug 3 on the way. Provide me with more veterancy again. I could have moved forwards these Black 43s. I probably should have, to be honest. Get them closer to the back side of this hill. But considering like the limited amount of air force that was coming at us, I mean there was actually quite a lot. But we were shooting it down because we already had like all of this AA from Lycus here. You might have noticed in the bottom left that I do have some off map. That's because I was bringing my off map to the left hand side of the map to help pretty much the only area of the map that was not taken yet. Like our team in general was doing really well, especially considering like how high level the enemy like guys were. I thought it would be a lot harder, but a really, really clutch shot there from Nigel. Unfortunately goes down soon after to the artillery shower, but what a cracking shot that was. That was the Sherman commander that was trying to retreat. It transmission destroyed it, so it couldn't move, and the Stug 3 popped it. It was actually fantastic. What a shot. So there we go. From this hill, we're doing incredibly well, and I got my 81 mil mortars moving up, and I've got two Nars horns now on the way. So 210 mil artillery moving up here. Probably just going to place like an off map here, just to help kind of clean this out, so that McShab can then push forwards and finish things off. That's the nice thing about off map is you can easily use it to help your opponent or help your opponent, help your uh, teammates, because it's it's basically something you can forget about. So you can just fire and forget, and then go back to what you were doing. It's a very like if you're newer to the game and but you do want to help out your teammates, like off map is probably a great way to do so if you don't need it yourself. So now Swan's on the way at like pretty much the perfect time. On this right hand side, you can see Zwo here and Grim Guy, even Moo Moo, pushing forwards with all this armor. There's a bunch of KV-85s, the M4A1 Rhino, there's a T-34 and an IS-2. The Nashorns up on this ridge could absolutely demolish these. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do. It's a shame that Nagel died. Would have been nice to still have Nagel with us. But it is what it is. The other thing I could have been doing here is, is move forwards my IG. It would have been good to start chunking some of these AT guns that Lily's trying to use to support the push onto the hill. Now using support weapons out in the open like this is not necessarily a bad idea. You might be thinking, like, why are they doing this? But if you can like support with like the OBs, for example, that were here, or like the infantry guns that were here with the AT guns, that stops the enemy from peeking whilst you push forwards with other troops. The only trouble you have is if you don't move them up in tandem. If you leave behind the support weapons and you move forwards with these Sherman 3s, for example, then it gets to a point where I can peek the Shermans without actually having to reveal myself to the support guns. And so making sure you have the support guns close enough to help is really important so don't get ahead of your support weapons if you're trying to do this of course in this case they're all going to get ottied because that's the right counter to do uh, but i'm still going to be able to pick off that sherman with my stug 3. meanwhile on the left off map has come down you can see it's broken this area broken this area it's going to allow mcshab to push in and then I've also got the IG now moved forwards, which is going to be popping these AT guns as well. The Nars horns are now moving up onto the hill, so I'm looking for the engagement with the armor on the right-hand side. Zizwo's still got his tanks here. I believe he fell back with them. And Grim Guy's rhinos falling back. So I'm going to be popping that. There we go. Nice clean kill. These Nars horns are awesome. <laughs> Currently firing at the infantry that's retreating across the open there. I've also got this pack 43 that's further back. 
but I was busy like microing this and also trying to work out where I wanted to put off map. I was going to put down off map here, but then <laughs> McShav asked me if he could use his Borg cards instead, so I cancelled my off map strike. Anyway, Nasson now engaging the KV-85s, that's one down. Such a perfect vantage point up here. I'm trying to get this other Nashorn into line of sight because it was kind of derping around. But that's the second KV-85 going down. I'm also going to be joined by a Tiger on this hill, so that's three star variancy. T-34-85 moving across the open. Oh, isn't this just beautiful? I guess going to knock that one out. That's a bunch of stuff in the open here that's just been absolutely decimated. Oh, Mumu's IS-2 is going to be peeking out. As well as these KV-85s. And there goes the IS-2 with another shot. Like, three-star veterancy. Absolutely blasting. See the nice ones up on the hill there. Boom. Nice shots there. From the Nashorns. 18 seconds left to go. Game's been over for a little while since we've gone up to 21 flags. Rocket Strike does come in. Fortunately, it doesn't kill my Nashorns. Going to be backing off. And the Bombing Strike's going to land. And that's it. All she wrote for this one 25 minutes, 26 seconds, an intense and incredibly fun game to play. Like the Stugs getting all of those kills out in the open against the Germans on the left and then the Nazhorns absolutely cleaning house in the open is the perfect 78 Sturm game. It was really good. So kills, of course a lot of kills. 3,520 kills to 1,100 losses. Big thanks to Lycus for the AA support. That really, really helped out. And Inky did well with that pack 40. Saved my bacon once. So yeah, that was really nice. Getting the foothold on the hill allowed pretty much all these players to do really, really well. And just check out this Stug. Good old Junker. With the three Sherman 3s from the Italians, the three Sherman 3s from the Canadians. There's another Sh Sherman 3 there actually from the Italians as well. And kills some infantry. What a kill list that is. This Stug 3 with a Wolverine and the SU-85 plus some extra stuff. Uh, this Stug 3 with another two Sherman 3s, like the Nigel with another two Shermans. Uh, we had the Stug 3 with the M10. Uh, this Stug 3 that cleaned up the Sherman that Nashorn, Nigel, um, or Nigel managed to transmission destroy. That was really big. And then at the end there, these Nashorns getting multiple KV-85s and the IS-2 and the M4A1. Uh, also, my Pack 43 managed to pick off a Sherman 3 at the end there as well. So so much armor destroyed in such a short amount of time 3520 kills in 25 minutes <laughs> that is it's pretty good going it's pretty good going that was a hell of a game it really really was and hopefully you guys enjoyed it that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye okay,